Доброго дня, шановні колеги. Ми продовжуємо сповіщати про важливі новини та Welcome everybody. We continue to update you on the developments in Ukraine. We are now into this 71st day of repelling Russian aggression. We see the new city heroes on the map of Ukraine, including Makariv, Irpin in Kyiv and other places where the infrastructure has been severely hit. Today we'll be talking about restoration of the city infrastructure. The world experience and specifics of Ukraine. I would like to give the floor to this member of the head of the standing committee member, Mr. Trubitsin, who is the chairman of the standing committee of the Kyiv City Council. My question would be, how much do you think it will take to restore the Kyiv infrastructure and what is the general volume of damage that has been inflicted upon the city. Indeed, Ukraine has suffered great damages and ruins, particularly in Kyiv region and the city of Kyiv and Mariupol in particular. We are talking about colossal volumes, tens and perhaps hundreds of billions of dollars worth. Once we have uh, estimated all the damages, I think it'll take years. But there are some estimations that we are working on. Currently, we have set up a charity foundation and uh, the branch of that foundation will be based in Munich in Germany, people who will be gathering money to restore our city through our charity foundation. On the 24th of February, Russia invaded Ukraine, killing thousands of civilians. More than 25% were forced to move with millions of people leaving Ukraine from different cities and dwellings of this country. Many cities have been completely destroyed. In my district, there are 38 buildings ruined. The ruins and uh, number of uh, refugees have not been seen since World War II. International community has expressed its readiness to help. We are now freeing our country it, to restore the infrastructure will take place plus titanic endeavors by every ukrainian and of course lots of money we have begun with the restoration of engineering structures to renew the delivery of uh, gas running water restoration of roads and other first uh, needs of the first use. But a full restoration of the cities, of course, is a matter of years. We are now thinking about practical things. Sooner or later, we will have to think about the beauty of our cities. To modernize our country and secure its bright future, these endeavors will be based on the following. The restoration of Ukraine will be done in a way so that Ukraine becomes a fully fledged member of the European community. To restore the communal life will be will require a lot of efforts to restore schools, hospitals and residential buildings will have to take on board the updated uh, methodologies, including green energy saving. There will be different goals. Ukraine after the war will be different. This is a unique opportunity to change the institutional face of Ukraine. Ukraine will see the influx of investments, but there is another 
urgent issue. Ukrainians are asking, is it possible to renew everything or it makes no sense to restore some places? I've got a good news. It is possible. The world experience tells us that there are cities that have been destroyed and they have been able to renew their lives. So will our beautiful and unbreakable Ukraine. We have a plan. First of all, the lack of corruption and the zero tolerance of corruption will be a first place. In our district of Obolon and is in the city of Kyiv, we see a clear picture how to invest, to draw investments from Ukraine and from abroad. As I've said, in the city of Munich, we have set up a branch of our foundation and it will be channeling money into this noble cause of the future of Ukrainian. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to give the floor to the advisor, to, th to the head of the Hastonel com uh, community. I think your city has suffered something that not all of us have seen. As we have uh, seen the f photographs and footage of those terrible damages, Bucha, Hostomel and Erpin are now restoring public transportation. Will you tell us when will you be able to restore the public transportation services in general, or whether all the routes are available for the public. The Hostomel is relatively small city, territorial community plus villages and settlements amount to 30,000 people officially, but since it's a, it's a key of suburb, there seem to be living more people than 30,000. The war began with the onslaught on Hostomel because we have the, the Antonov enterprise with, when we saw the first Russian assault paratroopers who were planning to advance to the capital city. This first wave was repelled by our armed forces and national guard and now people are coming ukrainians and foreigners to see firsthand the damages the ruined biggest aircraft in the world maria and the sufferings of the damages of the plant it was the most modernized craft building facility during the occupation and during the hostilities, 459 buildings, facilities were ruined, plus bridges and roads. One of the urgent issues that we are facing at the military civilian administration is schooling. There is not a single school where children can attend. Now that the territory has been demined, we are facing the challenge of rebuilding. The challenge being to begin educational process on the 1st of September. There are many people who don't have places to live in. This is the most painful question that unfortunately we have no answer to. I personally was ex inspecting the sites where temporarily dwelling and housing will be built with the help of our foreign partners. Hopefully, at the end of May, we will start this project of erecting temporarily housing. In spite of the fact that the military administration and authorities are asking people not to come back at least until the late May, but people who long to come home. So the number of people is growing daily. We see at least three to 400 people 
coming back, coming back with their sufferings and their grievances. And I have to tell you, I call this blood giving when you listen to people who are sharing their sufferings and grief with you. Over the last week, more than 1,000 people have uh, submitted requests for estimation of the damaged property. And especially we have people who have been living under the occupation for all the duration of the occupation. Can you believe everyone was deprived of their cell phones? Imagine a city where we are asking hairdressers to come back now that we have restored electricity, hairdressers, saloons are working in the streets. I have grown to work with the whole country. I was a high official, but when you see specific things so touching, and they're more telling than dry figures when you operate with in millions of grievances and budget things and so on. You are asking me about the public transportation services, the so-called uh, uh, van taxes are working, and there is some kind of connection to Kiev. Railway service is not yet available. I saw a train with the engineering specialists checking whether electric trains will be operative, operational. There are changes every day. Every day at 1700, we hear the reports of what has been done. D-miners and engineers are first, then state emergency service reports that the city has been fully liberated. Then we hear the information which parts of the cities can be lived in. Then we hear about the green open spaces that have been cleaned up. You can't reach uh, the territory of the Antonov facilities because there are risks that the of the rubbles. Our electricity specialists, gas specialists, everyone who deliver services are doing a fantastic job. We are trying to do everything as quick as we can. But the issue of quality restoration is a matter of the future. Our challenge of the military administration is this. When the civilians receive powers, we want to give over to them the best conditions to live in. We need quite a substantive help. As a person who has been working in the construction sector for 25 years, I understand what kind of money it will require. Of course, we count on the entrepreneurs, on the private businesses. They are quite actively working there. And I think that the assistance from the capital city of Kiev will be, will be necessary to be conducted shoulder to shoulder. We'll have to work together. As the en masse returning of people will be launched since June. This will be a major challenge for everyone. Hopefully, we will be ready for these developments. Thank you, Mr. Yakanuro. Apart from Hostomil, the city of Irpin has also suffered, represented by the member of the local council. Today, the humanitarian headquarters including Alexei Kuleba, they are informing that Irpin has seen 120 
architect, architects who are planning the restoration of the city. How do you cooperate with them? Have you found a common ground in terms of priorities? And will you tell us about the damages, complete damages, partly ruined buildings and so forth? Today's report was uh, on the social network, so I will not be, as they say, jumping the gun and inform you about how we are going to function. But frankly speaking, we have found a common ground with the Kiev regional administration and with the municipal council of the capital city. We have been helped by many organizations. We are developing the plans. A lot has been done, but our team, since the city was deoccupied, we are trying to restore the infrastructure. And of course, Kyiv City Council and the presidential office are coming in handy, plus volunteers, businesses, people who are now cleaning up the streets and open spaces. We received thousands of telephone calls from people willing to participate, and we are thankful for that. It is safe to say that 90% of the streets have been cleaned up, including the territories near the dwellings. We are now working on that. The assessment of the law enforcement tells us that 17,300 uh, objects have been ruined and 2,700 partially damaged buildings. We also have high-rise buildings that have been damaged. Today, the city was ruined up to 75%. There are a lot of ruins, so it'll take time to clean up the debris. We think we will need $850 million plus the same amount of money for the restoration of the infrastructure. As for the functioning of this city in general, will take up to $1 billion. It is important to remember that since the services are working 24 hours a day, we have restored the delivery of drinking water. We have been helped here by Kyiv City Council, including Mr. Klitschko, the head of the Kyiv Council. They have tasted the drinking water uh, themselves. And it's important because, you know, we were wild people living without water, with no gas, with no communications. We have uh, restored up to 80% of electricity supply until 1st of June. We plan, plan to restore where it is possible because we are, are aware of the volume of damages. 100% restoration is practically impossible. We are doing what we can. As for the delivery of gas, this is a serious challenge, quite complex. To relaunch gas delivery, we have to renew all the certified facilities. Otherwise, we will see gas leakage is something we want to avoid. As of now, 20% of uh, gas delivery has been restored in the city. When the situation is assessed, we are talking about restoration. Don't forget that the war is grinding on. We are not safe in saying that the enemy will be launching new attacks. The issue is very difficult, but we are seeing people 
coming to us different ambassadors from the embassies, uh, members of parliament, different foundations and businesses are willing to help us. But with the issue of 10,000 people having no places to live in, housing, schooling, kindergartens, we don't have a single kindergarten or a school that can welcome children. The damages are very serious there. Roofs, especially without a roof in the school, of course, you will understand children cannot go to school. This is basically today's situation in Irpin. After the liberation, we know that more than 400 people dead have been identified, recognized, that were exhumed. 290 bodies were exhumed. We are still seeing uh, mass graves near the roads. And apparently, these people were just uh, buried along the road, not to avoid the situation when bodies are littered in the streets. Well, the city is trying to come back to life. We were begging people through all channels possible not to come back to Irpin at least until the 1st of June, when we at least have a general picture of how to proceed. Now we have thousands of requests from owners of the damaged property. But as for the further instructions from the state bodies, we have not received them. We are re receiving requests. These requests are being processed. We have two teams of experts here. We have set up a special committee on that issue. But currently, the question of how to provide help to these people, how to provide housing, is only being decided. Tens of thousands, you understand, is a big number. We have uh, seen 25,000 people coming back. and. We have been very effective in getting people evacuated since the first days of the war until the elect, elect, electric uh, trains were available, we were using, but then, but then rail, railway was destroyed, so people were evacuated in the buses, about 40,000 people due to the help of ordinary citizens and volunteers who helped us to evacuate 40,000 people through the so-called road of life, the only bridge that we had, and it was blown up on the 28th of February at about six o'clock in the morning and we made a makeshift make uh, bridge in the area of settlement of Romaniv Romanivka, and more than 40,000 people were, avail were able to get to normal life, if that can be called a normal life, uh, that, through that bridge. So we asked people to give us some breathing space People don't seem to be aware of the complexities. People who left the city on the first day of war are now standing in the lines with the question, what should we do next? And it is not always that we have the answer to those questions. And I think we are not alone, many cities, perhaps, and the authority there cannot provide a clear-cut answer. Thank you. I would like to get connected and we cross over to the rector of the Oslo School of Architecture and Design in Oslo, Mr. Ule Gustafsson. 
The floor is yours, sir. Thank you so much. And, and first of all, thank you so much for inviting me to this uh, discussion and this meeting. It's, it's a great honor. Uh, and also, I would like to express my deepest compassion for the people of Ukraine. It is really difficult for us to understand the, 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 the unbelievable situation you are in, even though we see the pictures, we see everything in the news. Um, and I'm also very impressed to hear that you actually see opportunities in this uh, devastating situation that you are talking about, uh, you know, to renew, to restore and rebuild and see possible development in this, which I think is, is, uh, is the right way and the right approach and a good concept to, to rebuild uh, this incredible big, uh, big challenge uh, of, of what you are in. And I think also listening to you, because I have a lot of experience from the building industry. And, and while you were talking, I was actually thinking about the 9-11 in New York, because uh, uh, the company I'm from, Snoheta, uh, did restore uh, Ground Zero in New York, which was uh, a, a very small piece <laughs> compared to what you are uh, into at the moment. But I, I hear that you are talking about necessary infrastructure like uh, gas, electricity, uh, roads, water supply, drinking water. And I think that's, that's a very good approach because it's so necessary and so vital for, for actually rebuilding communities and, and helping people to have, I heard someone mention normal life, if it's possible, but also that, that kindergarten schools and, and you know, facilities for young people and education, which is my field, research and education, even though it's higher education, uh, is also very, very important. So I'm, I'm again, just grateful for, for the opportunity that that's, I'm given to, to listen to you and, and hear what you are saying. And I would very much look forward to, to be involved if possible. And I, I also, uh, even though I, I representing a large uh, architectural global company, I'm also rector for a university, specialized university in architecture, landscape architecture, urbanism and design. And I would very much like to be connected to similar institutions in Ukraine uh, so we could, we could work together because I think this is a huge task for Europe and for the world. So it's, it's really important that we are able to work together in different sectors. So I, I think also uh, when you're talking about a modern transformation, you are thinking about a sustainable development. Uh, and again, that you are looking at opportunities uh, makes it very uh, interesting and also impressive that you are able to do this while the war is going on. So, so again, thank you a lot. And, and if I'm able to, to contribute and to be with you uh, for the future, I'm absolutely interested. And, and also because I have a large international network in the university sector, uh, but also in private sector when it comes to construction and architecture. So again, thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Gustafsson. I would like to give the floor to the master of the University of Manchester, the chairman of the Ukraine is foundation. I am happy for this meeting to have taken place. We have engaged representatives of all branches of government and stakeholders 
who will be working on the restoration, local authorities, businesses, NGOs, academicians, university teachers, our foreign partners. We appreciate your participation, especially from Norway. This help will be asked for here in Ukraine, and we'll be happy to cooperate. As we have heard from many quarters of the world, the plan of restoration is important. As a alumni of the British University, it's also a pleasure to have heard that from British authorities, from the European countries, and our friends around the world. It is important to have these plans implemented. How will this be done is dependent on today's planning, how cooperation is planned, how we can agree with each other. It is not only dependent on the hostilities, it is also dependent on the available money. We heard about the freezed uh, money by the Russian oligarchs, but it depends on the legislation of many countries. Perhaps this will be part of the international negotiations. Of course, we know that businesses will participate, universities will participate in assessing the needs and the plans of restoration. Situation will be challenging. And it is a pleasure that our foreign partners are offering their help, including the Oslo School of Architecture and Design. Hopefully, this plan will work. Thank you. I would like to give the floor to the academician, president of the Ukrainian Project Management Association, Mr. Bushuyev. You're working on such like projects now. What's your vision, how the buildings will be designed? What's your take on that? Thank you. We have uh, held a roundtable discussion today with our colleagues. The subject matter being the vision of the post-war restoration of Ukraine on the basis of the portfolio of uh, the restoration project. It was attended by a number of specialists, about 100 of them, Ministry of Education including, and leading building universities, the Ukrainian parliament, auditing services, Ministry of the territorial development and uh, local authorities from Kyiv, Kirovograd, Dnipro and other cities. The round table discussion was also attended by representatives from 1200, 12, excuse me, countries of the world, including Poland, Japan, Croatia, Latvia, excuse me, Lithuania. They all expressed their support to us. So the major direction of the development that we suggested was discussed. And uh, we discussed such areas of development as innovative technological portfolio of the future projects something that we are tasked to develop for every single settlement, for every single territory, for separate oblasts, regions, and the Ukrainian country in general. We will have to prioritize our areas of development as a model of investment development, we took this from the United Nations organization. And this will be the groundwork 
for building a sustainable development project. It includes 17 goals of sustainable goals that will be the basis of our further work and implementation. The major vector that uh, we have been working so far is legislation. And uh, at the roundtable discussion, we were talking to the parliamentarians from the select committee of uh, construction and building. The MPs were talking about the legislation procedures for rebuilding of Ukraine. We talked about that qu quite in detail. But also we had people from the executive branch of government. And this is important because we have to train the experts to work in these programs. For us to have the possibility to take on board best practices, practices in the world. And uh, of course, we are all aware that our resource, financial resources are limited. We also discussed educational sector. It is an important part of the work because we will have to train many specialists in these areas these specialists will have to be of the highest quality, but working professions, manual professions will also be required. We will need hundreds of thousands of people who will be implementing these investment projects. Our colleague, a professor from a Ankara University, he suggested to take on board the experience of training the specialists of a lower level, as we call them. But these are qualified personnel who have uh, working specialities. We will face quite a lack of such workers. Then we were talking about academic or scientific aspect. We should be aware that more than 60 professors and PhDs participated in the discussion, and th they are majoring in these subject matters, including many other foreign countries. We were offered help by the World uh, Association of Builders, if, I, if the interpreter has heard it right. But they have quite an expertise in managing portfolio project. We have agreed that they will support us in terms of studies and implementing different tools and methodologies. Another area is monitoring potential. We should be well aware of the clearly formed and shaped goals. You know, sometimes we work on the ad hoc principle when we have seen something nice and we want to have it copy copied here. This is not the way for us to proceed. The goal for us is one of the priorities is to keep track, to provide good auditing and good governance. Another area of work that is important is restoration of the businesses and entrepreneurship engagement in the sustainable development projects. Unfortunately, smaller or medium-sized businesses today are facing quite difficult times. And this sector of 
economy may become a driver of economic growth. And the last point that we discussed was infrastructural direction, one of the most complex and uh, resource demanding areas. This is where we were, we will have to implement into life after the war is over. We know how to do this. There are developments here. We've been working for many years on these. We know the best practices. We have a good set of professors, leading thinkers in that area. So we think that in this areas, we will be successful in the shortest period of time. I would also like to note that as preliminary, preliminary result, results tell us, we have 200 educational uh, facilities ruined, ruined our plants, churches, 350 bridges. We know that the value of the damages as of today amounts to almost a annual budget of Ukraine, which is approximately $50 billion worth. We understand that this money will have to come from somewhere. We should also understand that that ruins that Ukraine is suffering from are not equal. We know that in the Lugansk and Donetsk regions, there are colossal damages. In the city of Kiev and other oblasts, the damages are not that serious. In Chernihiv and Mykolaiv, of course, the quantity quantity of buildings ruined is much higher. We have also analyzed the share of the housing lost, and we've uh, seen a terrible, horrendous picture. About 47% of the housing sector has been damaged in uh, Donetsk, 18% in Chernihiv Oblast, and a little bit less in other regions, but the volumes are colossal. And of course, we know about the completely ruined housing. The sectoral dimension of the economic loss, metallurgy, perhaps, is number one victim. It's about $3 billion worth of uh, losses in the steel sector, in machine building, in coke extraction. The damages are very substantial. We have uh, also calculated the doses damages uh, in terms of uh, roads, railways, and so on. This will have to be taken into account when our projects and programs are planned. We would like to have help from the World Bank, other institutions, and other partners that are standing ready to invest into the development of Ukraine. And I thank you for your attention. There is a potential in Ukraine to secure a professional restoration. However, we will have to wait until the war is over and only then will we have to work very energetically. 
with the Ministry of Education, we have decided to set up teams and task force to work out the methodologies, etc., of the post-war rebuilding. So this work will be developing. But this is the this has been the first round table discussion. We will continue our work under the aegises of the Council of Rectors of Ukrainian universities and foreign universities. I know that Professor Gustafsson has such a great expertise in rebuilding, I think, Bosnia-Herzegovina. I was there and I saw firsthand what was going on then in Bosnia-Herzegovina about a decade ago. Thank you very much and glory to Ukraine. Glory to heroes. I would like to give the floor to the major uh, major specialist for our guest, uh, Nezak Zdrolovich. The floor is yours, Mr. Nezak. I'm so happy to participate in today's discussion. I would like to thank especially my friend Sergei. As, I, as he mentioned, I am from Bosnia-Herzegovina. When uh, the war started, I found myself as a refugee in Norway. My background is engineering and building, and I am specialist in using green energy. In addition, I also work for the Oslo School of Architecture and Design, representing them in Eastern Europe. In the first place, I would like to tell you how unbearable it is to see the Russians devastating beautiful Ukrainian citizens and with more than 5 million refugees leaving Ukraine. In my native country, we have seen such a terrible war and we condemn such aggression. We hope that the conflict will be over soon, but we also know how big that work will be to restore Ukraine. Our cooperation will have to be directed in two areas. First is international cooperation between teachers and students, and secondly, cooperation to restore Ukraine after the war. When we talk about university cooperation, I would like you to engage other Ukrainian universities. You, if you have the content, contacts, I would like you to share those people and universities who will be interested in cooperating with us. Let me also remind you that I speak Russian and uh, I know some Ukrainian when you were speaking, Ukrainian didn't understand anything. So if neither am I good in English, if you ask me a question, I would like you to put them in Russian. Thank you. We've got 10 minutes at our disposal, three minutes to each panelist. The rec Mr. Kulikov, the rector of Kiev National University of Civil Engineering and Architecture. Welcome, dear colleagues. Our university majors in such issues as assessing the damages in the regions that you mentioned, Bucha, Erpin, and Chernihiv. 
we have allocated 55 specialists who are currently engaged in these assessments. Shall I say that this is our contribution to a general cause? Our specialists have also develop, developed some options for building the so-called module housing that is to say there are options in and we are working on that in a focused way the once there are are other issues to discuss i am ready to participate and my university will welcome with open hands any project that will be coming our way and as Sergei uh, have told us he, he he depicted all possible ways to go the general director of a national manufacturer of foam plastic, Mr. Zakharinkov. I will not take up too much of your time. The war is raging on. We are facing greater challenges related to the echo of this war. Of course, the materials, the logistics have uh, skyrocketed but we have been able to almost to retain all our plants, about 70 facilities, 70% of them, and we are ready to provide the foam plastic materials for the future restoration. Of course, we have problems, but I will not touch upon them. You know, we received uh, raw materials from from Russia and we will be searching for other ways including cement and the uh, other systems there are other uh, materials that we will have to find our government should understand that the biggest thing they can do is not to interrupt with our work to give us some tax credits the resources raw materials of course will go up and up and uh, these um, goods are uh, have grown three or more times we have also facilities that are in the occupied territories. There will be a lot of problems with gas provision, everything that has to do with the uh, brick processing, of course, is energy demanding. And at this time, the taxes go higher because the government says that the budget must be uh, receiving money and i think we should follow other way to to attract foreign investments of course we will participate in renovation i was in bucha baradyanka and hastomel and i saw firsthand my heart aches when i think about them my colleagues mentioned two years for restoration i don't think it'll take at least five years but we must know what will be the materials that we'll be using. These materials will have to be cheap. I have good uh, cooperation with the German and Polish companies. They will be uh, coming to our help. As for the intellectual property, they will be ready to share with us. We are working with our foreign partners they are here to help but the first thing is that the cost of building must be relevant fuels go high logistics 
the price of logistics go high, energy goes up. Of, but this is our country. We will be fighting for our country. There is no other Ukraine to fight for. But we want to be heard. I want the authorities to relieve us from high taxes. You know, when I hear that uh, there are uh, 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 taxes that have been lessened for cars, and we see fancy cars going through the border, this is not a priority, I don't think. But we are talking about uh, the raw materials. We are asking America, Japan, we have some quotas where to get this raw materials from. But when you see Maybach and Rolls Royce going through the uh, Ukrainian border, because, uh, you know, it's, it's cheap now to get them here. But this is not the priority. Priority must be bricks and raw materials. And I believe that in two of to five years' time, we will restore something and then we will build the sustainable building that I saw in Europe. We must understand there will be no more cheap oil, cheap gas. It will be all ori ori oriented to market prices. Unless the taxation is brought down, these materials will be very expensive and we will not be able to purchase them. We also understand that part of the buildings will be rebuilt at the expense of the dwellers, of the tenants who used to live in those buildings. I'm not sure that all the foundations will be able to provide money for such restoration. And once we are heard, once they listen, the authorities listen to us, everything is going to be good. In five years' time, this will be a flowering and uh, very happy country. I would like the president of the Public Foundation, your kindness, Mr. Stepurin, to draw the line. To conclude today's press conference, I would like to thank the Uber Inform Information Agency for this platform that has brought together representatives of the authorities, academic circles, businesses. I appreciate your participation. We are thinking about the future. As we have said it today, in spite of the war, there is a future for Ukraine, and the future will be bright. And I wish that we came together not only to talk about problems, but uh, would be engaged very actively in spite of the fact that the aggression is still grinding on. Thank you. Hopefully, this press conference will be a contribution to restoration of the infrastructure in this beautiful country. Thank you very much. Dear colleagues, we are wrapping up today's press conference. Thank you to all the panelists who have joined us here and through Zoom. Glory to Ukraine. Thank you very much.